Hello, this is the Schachter and Singer study done in 1962. The aim of the study was to test the two-factor theory of emotion. This study will be presented by Johanna, Alexis, and Paula. Hypothesis one was, if a person experiences a state of arousal for which they have no immediate explanation, they will label the state and describe their feeling in terms of the cognition available to them at that time. Hypothesis two, if a person experiences a state of arousal for which they have an appropriate explanation, then they will be unlikely to label their feelings in terms of the alternative cognitions available. In hypothesis three, it says, if a person is to put in a situation which in the past could have made them feel any emotion, they will react emotionally or experience emotions only if they're in a state of psychological arousal. Independent variable of the study was the knowledge about the injection and the emotional situation the participant was placing after the injection. Dependent variable was the observational data that was recorded during the emotional arousal element of the experiment. Self-report that the participants completed. Controls. The setting was controlled since it was a lab experiment. The procedure was also controlled. The stooge was also controlled since he interacted with all participants. Who were the participants? The participants were male college students at the University of Minnesota who were in their intro to psychology class. Before the study, health records were checked and there were 90% volunteer, 10% opportunity sample. Each participant received two extra credit points on the final for every hour in the experiment. There were 185 participants. One dropped out, which made it 184. Before the study, each participant was cleared by health services to receive adrenaline injections. Procedures. All of the participants were deceived by being told an inaccurate aim of the study. A doctor entered the room and repeated instructions, took the participants' pulses, and then injected them with suproxen, when in reality they were injected with either adrenaline or a placebo which was a saline solution. The adrenaline participants were then put into one experimental condition, epi-informed, in which the participants experienced psychological arousal with explanations such as heart pounds, handshaking, and etc., which were thought to be due to saproxen. Epi-misinformed, in which participants felt psychological arousal without any kind of explanation and epi-misinformed, in which participants felt psychological arousal, but they were told that they would have numb feet and headaches. In addition to all of this, there was also a placebo group that was given a saline injection with no psychological arousal and no instructions. They were then taken to a separate waiting room where there was a switch who was passing as another participant. The switch began to act happily and play with objects. The participants were observed to see whether they would react to the stooge angrily or not. Oftentimes, the stooge told the participants he or she thought it was unfair to be given injections and that they should have been told about the injections. They also completed a 20-minute answering questionnaire. The five-page questionnaire started innocently, but then grew into becoming much more personal. After the study was completed, the participants were then debriefed on everything that they had gone through, including the fact that they were deceived. Findings and conclusions. The results support their two-theory factor of emotion. None of the groups differed significantly from each other. Informed groups show the rise in levels of self-reported anger. The uninformed groups show the most over anger. This type of data collected was qualitative data and was collected through self-reports. The data was also collected through observation from the researchers. A practical strength of this study is that because it was completed in a lab experiment, it was highly standardized and had high validity as well as replicability.
In addition to this, the participants were randomly allocated to different conditions and the Stooges did not know what conditions the participants were in, meaning that this was a double-blind procedure. An ethical strength of the study is that the participants' identification and confidentiality were protected at all times. In addition to this, the study also used deception in order to deceive the participants about the true aim. A practical weakness of this study is that the study lacked ecological validity because it was completed in a lab and it was not completed in a normal environment. In addition, it lacked mundane realism because it is not relatable to everyday life, since most of the tasks that were completed were things that the participants did not do on a regular basis. Ethical weaknesses of the study, the participants could have been harmed when they had the shots of adrenaline. Also, moving forward, the adrenaline could have caused them long-term effects that would affect their everyday lives. Another weakness of the study is that it is not generalizable to the entire population because all of the participants in the study were male. Issues and debates of this study can be looked at from the nature versus nurture perspective, in which this case specifically focuses on nature because we are looking at natural aspects, this being because it is a biological study, we are focusing on the nature of emotions. This can also be looked at from the individual versus situationalism standpoint, especially in this case, we put them in a situation with people who are angry and we also tried to see if they will react angrily as well or if they will react in accordance to their own individualness.